Hey there, welcome to another episode of Cooking with Violet Vixen. Tonight we are cooking crofter casserole, which is basically fish and potatoes and onions and butter and salt and pepper, all in, all done, one pot, bake it in the oven. It's really easy, hopefully it'll be really good. This is what we need. So you either need a casserole pot that you can put a lid on or a tray that you can put foil over. So I'm going to go with this one just so that I've got heaps of room just in case. Uh, come on in. I haven't started to get everything ready yet, but I've got it all here. So in we go. As I said, it's really easy. I ordered from the butcher um fish i asked for four by 225 gram fillets of snapper bream carp or bass and i don't know what i got all i know is i got fish 75 grams of butter i'm going to weigh that out two large onions sliced i thought i ordered them i didn't i went for a walk up to the supermarket nearly got run over at the crossing abused the lady that nearly ran me over Anyway, told her she was a dickhead, pretty much. Um, so, anyway, couldn't get large onions, so I brought three medium ones. Four medium potatoes, which we're going to thinly slice. Uh, that brings us to using our mandolin slicer, um, a.k.a. don't put your fingers too close to it, otherwise you won't have fingers. Salt and pepper. Okay, so real easy. Pop your oven onto 200 and let's get ready to go. All right, so if you don't have a mandolin slicer, I do recommend you get one because uh, for recipes like this, this makes it so much easier. Now, my recipe says to slice the potatoes, but it doesn't tell me to peel them, but I will peel them anyway. So this is why I say it's a finger slicer. Put your fingers there, you'll know all about it. Use this thing. Uh, don't be tempted not to use it because um, that is sharp. I have cut my finger a little bit on it once before um, by not using that thing. So, all right, I'm going to peel the potatoes, uh, pop them in water for a little while, and then I'll be back to use them on this. You can use it for the onion as well. That way then you're going to get that thinly sliced as well. So I'm going to go and do that and then I'll be back. Okay, so from the butter we want 25 grams and we're going to grease the pan. So the best way to do that would be to actually just sit that like that on top of the stove and the butter will start and melt and then you can just rub it on with the, the paper. Or melt it in the microwave and use it that way, whichever you prefer. All right, so we've got our mandolin slicer ready. We're not slicing our fingers though. So what I've done is I've peeled the four potatoes and I'll pop them in water. So once I've sliced them, I can actually put them back in there. So it's real easy. Just go like this. Okay, so when you're done, your four potatoes will look like that. So pop those back in the water. And then we're going to do the onion. Okay, now we don't need to clean it for the onion because it's going in the same dish. So this one is probably going to be a bit harder to get hold of. Probably should actually cut it in half first. If I had have thought of that, I would have done it. So I'll just show you with one. Ow. Because you've got to have something for this to grab at. Otherwise, you're going to be tempted to use your hands and then you're going to slice your fingers. Mm -hmm. 
so you get lovely thin slices with that one as well okay and that onion is making me cry but that's how that looks so now that that's all done I actually don't need a bowl to put that in so that is dirty anyway all right so be very careful when you wash up the slicer otherwise once again you'll cut your fingers all right so that is a mandolin slicer if you are a big fan of making potato bake etc etc where you need to slice things thin I recommend you get one of those not only does it cut your preparation time in half uh, you at least know everything is all the same size it's good for doing stir fry stuff as well because it's got extra uh, fittings in it or I guess you'd call them fittings for like different size slices and julians and all that sort of stuff so anyway now that I've told you how good my mandolin slicer is let's make this croft a casserole all right so butter we're just going to grease it around it did melt a little bit alternatively I could have actually put the whole pan in the oven but you know what whatever doesn't melt it'll melt once it goes in the oven which is what I'm intending on doing anyway so all right so first job first we're going to wash and dry the fish I suppose we're drying it just so that we don't get all that um, water excess water going through it so the best way to dry anything in the kitchen is generally with paper towel not your bath towel or your tea towel or whatever so just grab yourself some paper towel two sheets should be plenty pop it down on your bench and then just put your fish in between it and just pat it dry I think I can feel bones in this fish but from memory this might be the one that I had before that I said was delicious so we'll see how we go all right I'm just going to do three pieces give it a pat I mean it's pretty funny drying fish because it's not like it's ever supposed to be dry and then I'm just going to place it in the pan like so and then I'm going to need some more paper towel and I'm really going to need some more paper towel because that's the last two sheets got a few more than four pieces here but I think what he's done is he's just given me the correct weight that I wanted so I'm happy with that all right pat it down make it all happy and dry all right so this one I'm going to put here because it's a bigger piece and that one I'm going to put off to the side and then the last one I'll also put off to the side so it is sort of going uphill, but I don't think that's going to really worry us. All right, so we should have a layer of fish. And the butter's on the bottom, so it's having a nine-nights on that. Okay, so we're going to do a layer of onion over the top. Now, if you don't like a lot of onion, where it, um, the recipe says two large onions, go for two small ones. I've gone for three medium. Then we want a layer of potato. With the potato, try and um, lap it up a bit more like that. I think my mandolin slicer thingy got a bit chopped up so that could have been a finger I really hate that thing sometimes 
like most things it has its good points and its bad points and you've just seen its bad point right there it chops plastic okay so cover the fish with a layer of onion and then a layer of potato season and dot with butter now anytime a recipe tells you to season unless it specifies it is always salt and pepper okay and then dot some butter all right so we're basically going to put half of the butter over the top and obviously we're just putting the butter there so that it doesn't look like it needs a suntan because potatoes when they're white obviously look like they need a suntan all right so our final layer of onions oh, everything falls on the floor have you ever had a day where all you do is drop everything see I'm dropping onions maybe I should just hold it's all right it's a knife I should hold it right close to it orange pieces of plastic are my slicer thing I don't really feel like eating orange pieces of plastic all right it's a lot of onion probably should have put more onion on the other part oh well it is what it is okay so when that's looking something like that all you need to do now is get the last of the potatoes yes i called them potatoes So this is basically what you would call a potato bake with a surprise at the bottom. Technically. It's a good one pot um, dish as well. If you want a bit of a variation over fish and veggies, you can cook it all in the same pot or pan, I should say. Still more potatoes. Now I almost feel like I should have gone with a bigger tray. I really do. Anyway, I will get a good potato bite to it. This serves four. I don't know. Oh, I did tell you that on the bottom of the instruction sheet i apologize for not verbally saying it uh, it looks like it's probably going to serve more than four though just as a heads up that's quite a lot there all right now our final step is to season it yet again and some pepper Grab the rest of that butter, dot it all about, all right, grab some foil, cover it over the top and then we're going to be ready to chuck it in the oven. Not literally, I'm not literally going to chuck it in the oven. Um, just as a heads up, you might want to put a tray under it. It might bubble over. But the only thing that's really going to bubble over is the butter. And we want to try and keep that butter inside because otherwise we're going to have dried out potatoes. And dried out potatoes suck. 
All right. In it goes for 20 minutes at 200 degrees. In 20 minutes, we're going to take the foil off and give it another five minutes, and then we're going to be good to serve. So I'll see you in 20 minutes. Okay, so it wasn't quite done, didn't look quite as golden as it does now. So I gave it, after that five minutes, I gave it another five, and then it still didn't look good. So I gave it another 10. So that's technically cooked for 40 minutes. And you can imagine it would take longer if I hadn't have sliced the potatoes up that thin. So, thank you for watching Cooking with Violet Vixen. This has been Crofter Casserole. I'm going to cut this up and have my dinner. And I'll be back soon because I'm making some dessert tonight. Catch you soon. Bye.